Okay, let's read this again. In the beginning, there was nothing. Then the great cleric created the realm of nobility far up amongst the stars and, am and the realm of the mortals below. The cleric yelled, Let there be darkness, so I may fill the land with sinners and bestow fair and brutal judgment upon all. The cleric said, Let the sand bring forth stones and reeds to build, but also ember to destroy. The cleric built one great light to rule the day, and shouted, None shall rule the night, and in this sacred time, none will be safe. After six days of building, the cleric grew ill and tired. He knew that he could not rest and leave his world without watchful eyes. He created the Grand Diplomat in his image and power. And as the cleric rested, the diplomat wrote laws to punish and judge. With this great intertwining of church and state, the world was ready for the age of mortals. The cleric and diplomat colluded to spawn mortals in their image and let them have the lands below. The diplomat, with his great wisdom, decided the mortals shall always be inferior and bow to the creators. Thus the two proclaimed that none shall ever feel hope or happiness. Those feelings shall forever be reserved for the creators. The Grand Diplomat transcribed all that the cleric commanded into mortal law. He stood at the center of the amphitheater in the town of perdition and declared, None shall live in the same home or act as a family, as you shall look at your creators as father and mother, brother and sister. None shall kill those of their own in the hours of light. Those are the hours of work and toil, where all must farm and provide tithing for thy creators. Despite the great generosity of both the cleric and the diplomat, the mortals argued and bickered amongst themselves. They whispered heresies and a call of rebellion. Many lost faith in their cleric's teachings and denied him as their creator. The tithing slowed, and therefore the greatest law, love thy creators, was broken, and all were made sinners by their own doing. The cleric and diplomat looked upon the realm of mortals, and behold, it was corrupt. Thus the cleric called all mortals together on the outskirts of the town of sympathy. The cleric stood before all and shouted, The end of flesh and bone has come, and behold, I will destroy the realm of mortals. The cleric shot a bolt of magic into the sky. A roar could be heard across the realm, and the skies burst into blue flame. The clouds turned to icy stones that fell to the ground, impaling mortals and crushing homes. Never again shall rain touch the sands. The beautiful realm of mortals was transformed into the barren desert, the droughts. The ungrateful mortals threatened and condemned the cleric, committing great crimes of heresy. It was clear to the diplomat, a judge and executioner, that all were deserving of the greatest punishment. With his staff, he shot flames into the crowd of mortals and scorched their flesh. The sinners screamed and wept as they slumped over one another in, t in the bone pit. The cleric dropped to his knees and prayed for the wailing mortals. Let all who stood against us lie in this pit for eternity and contemplate your treachery. May you lie awake as your flesh rots and bones crumble to ash. The diplomat poured a vile liquid over the group of wealthy mortals as they lie silent and dying. He said, This potion will preserve the flesh of all those who were rich. May you forever remember the inequality of in your lives and build resentment over the coming ages. The two rose to the realm of nobles, thus marking the end of all life, law, and creed in the droughts. As the two flew far above the land, they created the firmament, an invisible shell to hold all the condemned subjects that remained in the vast desert prison. Huh. So that's the lore for the game.